Hello, not here. Oh, welcome back to Grim Dawn. We are playing with the Ashes of Melman of Expansion as an Inquisitor. And with our dual guns, we murder fools left and right and center. We've arrived in a Darkville Gate. Which has some loot to offer to us. Lots and lots of lots of shiny loot. In the last episode, we managed to craft the Marauder's Talisman, so we're doing a little bit more damage than we did before. But of course, we're still not one-shotting everything, so a little bit of tactics and then some, some hit and running is gonna be appropriate. So for the episode, this episode, we're going to run through the Darkfall Gate. Uh, have an interesting meeting with Carols. See uh, if we can survive that fight, since it's, it, it, it has the potential to become rather frantic. He's uh, a bit sturdy, especially you know, in the second phase. He's tougher than, than some other mobs would be. And after that, we're just going to... No? plow into the snow and see just how far we can get in a single episode. But, well, we've effectively left Act 3 behind us and we're now walking into Act 4. So, I guess this is now the halfway point. It used to be, you know, once you more or less reached Homestead, that was where you know, Act 3 roughly started. So that was the halfway point. With the addition of the two new acts in the expansion. The halfway point is now roughly here. Might have even just, just passed already after we left the, um, the homestead. Now it's a bit difficult to pinpoint. But we're getting there. On the other hand, it's also getting towards the end of November. And as I've mentioned uh, a couple times before, now my plan is to play Path of Exile again once the uh, new expansion comes out on the 8th of December 2018. So that, that gives us about two weeks to wrap things up. Of course, so if I... I'll probably just spend some weekends just recording some extra content so I'll be you know, done playing the series before the episodes go live. Now with Path of Exile, I'll, uh, I'll spend some time with that, do a full playthrough. Um, expansion has a heavy focus on maps, so I'll probably spend some time digging into that as well. But at some point I will return to uh, Grim Dawn. I might now do it just, alter, uh, no, just one uh, game at a time, I might also actually start a, a, a Grim Dawn series once we, well, once we've been doing maps for a week or two and then just alternate days with the both games or something along those lines i'll just have to see exactly how i'm gonna do that i did i actually forgot to open this one how silly of me The uh, 103 patch of Grim Dawn made some uh, changes to the endgame balance, most specifically for the uh, for the new content and uh, how things behave after level 70. So you know, that that does give us some some interesting opportunities for maybe doing a, a character that actually does play through all three difficulties, um, maybe even on, on on hardcore. We'll have to see. It's uh, going to have to be a bit of a faster character to play than my uh, Retaliation uh, Commando. It was a fun character, but it was not the fastest character in the world. But on the other hand, I don't want something that is as not squishy as this one, because uh, it's not a playstyle that I am very good at keeping alive. I, I naturally gravitate towards the more tanky characters 
I think like something like a, a summoner. While it's it's fun to play through the game, I don't think it would be something that I could keep alive all the way until ultimate. So we'll have to see. I've I've been been trying, thinking of maybe uh, like a a drain essence death knight or something along those lines. Now combine the tankiness of the of the soldier with the survivability of the the drain essence. Or, nope, simply do a, a full playthrough and don't do it on hardcore. And... No, just do a full playthrough and see what is there to see. And I'll spend some time in the end game going after all the roguelike dungeons on Ultimate. Doing the, uh, the Hidden Path and the uh, Mad Queen Rislava. Uh, side quests, for example, on Ultimate, things like that. No, going after the, the, the challenges. No, trying to just check off as many of the uh, Nemesis bosses as possible, since I have yet to face one. At least outside of the Crucible. In the Crucible, it's easier to see them, and they are, well, they're tough. So it would be interesting to see what a level 100 plus, I suspect, um, Nemesis is going to be. Oh, and also no, uh, take the opportunity to have a look at no, some of the factions that might have a um, revered. I think that was the final, the name of the final uh, faction title or final faction status. We'll see what the uh, if they have if some of them have quests and, and what they would be like. For example, in the uh, expansion Barrel Home, is now it has a, a locked cellar. Which, as far as I understand, has a, a fight in it that could be interesting. Well, stuff like that could be fun to do. But if I just take my uh, Commando playthrough as a as a rough uh, comparison for no, the old content, I spent uh, I think it was. 101 or 102 episodes playing all the way from Act 1 through Act 4 um, and then repeating that on Elite and on Ultimate once again. And as I said, it was a very tanky retaliation style build, so my offense was absolutely abysmal. We were very good for dealing with groups of enemies. Boss fights much, much, much slower. Um, but sturdy as hell, which was the important bit. So if I'll oh, get myself a, a faster character, then of course the playthrough is going to be faster, but we now have 50% more content. So no, on the old play uh, speed, that will be 150 episodes. And now even if I release them every two days, that's effectively going to be a series that's going to last for a full year. Uh, I, I know myself, my attention span Going for a full year, that that's going to be pushing things quite a bit. Ooh, serious. On the other hand, so if I manage to play through a bit faster, maybe just sometimes do maybe a live stream or something and just have a look, a look at maybe um, using the... Oh, the, the live stream, oh, if you just play straight for like an hour or two or three. You can get quite some progress done, especially if I'm not oh, uh, stopping in between every time for no breaks, things like that. Because then you can actually get quite a lot of stuff done. So, no, I'm playing with the ideas, basically what I'm trying to say here. But I haven't really figured out what kind of shape I want to put it. Ooh, ooh, there's something over here. It's always nice finding more secrets with more loot. Ah, Wreath of Souls. This is also one of the very nice Necromancer helmets. Even if you're not playing a summoner, the plus one to all Necro skills on the helmet is pretty decent to have. Okay, getting close to the boss fight, so much we'll just put down a panic portal here. 
We are also close to leveling, so it would be wonderful if we could actually murderize a couple more enemies. Wonderful. Almost as if it's on demand. And then max out the Horn of Gandar. So it's now level 12 out of 12. 60% main hand damage, 10 meter radius, 1560 PS damage, 2.5 to 6 seconds of confusion, and a 33% reduced target elemental damage for 5 seconds. So that, that's no oh, bit of offense mixed with defense. And it, it ought to be very nice for dealing with large crowds. The uh, range is all the way up to here, which is pretty decent. So it, it almost reaches to the uh, standard shooting range of some foes. But in this case now we can just explode cast our foes. Which is nice. Hey, uh, I think this could be fun, just exploding fools. Hey, Keros, let's see, are we prepared? Hello there, Mr. Keros, how are you today? You wanna step on my runes? Oh, so far so good. Just uh, keep them tethered, just put a defensive circle here. First stage done. Can't loot them yet, that's unfortunate. The Unraveler, sure. I'll keep the Horn of Gander up for now. For oh, situations like this where I'm just completely surrounded. Oh, actually, the enemies died rather quickly. Okay, Horn seemed like a good skill for clearing add-ons in fights like these. That's very, very useful. It allows us to focus on the boss, not get distracted by whatever else is there. And actually do the thing we're good at, killing single targets. So, yeah, I think Horn of Gandar does pass the, uh, the, the, the test of is it worth the skill points we've put in, I think at this point we can roll. It is worth the points we put in. Wonderful. So after this little bit of excitement, let's move over to the next waypoint. And oh wow, we're only 13 minutes into the episode. That's uh, That means we got quite some time left. So there's lots of things we can still sell. I think we should at least be able to pass through the snowy area. That's gonna net us another one waypoint. I don't think our rover status is enough to... Uh yeah, I see we need to be honored before we get access to the uh, Avatar of Morgo Dragon quest. You guys just run away. Marvelous. Yeah, the more I think about of it, um, the more I think that doing a full playthrough, probably let's not do it on hardcore. Let's just do it on, uh, no, nope, non-hardcore. Doesn't really have a name in, uh, in Grimdon. Just the normal mode, I suppose. Because um, it, it also allows me to maybe just do a little bit of farming in between episodes, maybe take care of some very trivial side quests, things like that, so I can actually get the series moving along. And now maybe just do a full playthrough on, on, on Veteran, and then once we move over to Elite and Ultimate, um, maybe only have the episodes focus on the main parts of the questline, but I'll just skip more optional things and just go back and uh, complete them in between episodes. So that way it's, it's not going to be something that's going to last for half a year to a year.
Because not both my own attention span usually doesn't last that long. Um, and I don't want to uh, rely too much on just uh, wanting to finish a series for the sake of finishing it rather than uh, really being motivated for it. And it's also not all viewers have the the same attention span either. Uh, I know some folks really just enjoy it if a series actually goes on for over 100 episodes and they'll watch every one of them. But some folks, though, after no, 10 or 20 episodes, it's like, okay, I'd, I'd rather like to see something else now. So, yeah, wanna, of course, try to keep as many folks um, happy as possible there. Eh? And then again, no, again, just thinking out loud. If I were to do the, the, the veteran playthrough portion, I would just as a one episode per day main series. And then after that, switch it to like a secondary series that only gets an episode every other day. Then I could have something else running besides it. Uh, no, something Path of Exile, something Ground Dawn, something maybe completely different. And then well, you get both the, the variety and the longer term fans, both, uh, and then for them there's both something to, uh, to enjoy. Okay, so we cleared out everything on top. I probably shouldn't have, but every once in a while, I just navigate into, let's say the wrong direction, but then there's plenty of uh, enemies there that will justify just staying there for a little while longer. So the Astakarn Road has a couple of camps that offer you some, some lore bits uh, for the trip south. Trip south is, I think, one of the better parts of lore in the, in the game. Just because it is, it is really grim. Hello there, Alara Starfire. I, think I just want to have a little bit more maneuvering space here. Eh? And there you are, gone. But as I said, this is not going to be a lore-based playthrough. But oh, I do enjoy just pointing out some things here and there. There's three parts to it, and I think. I did see on Reddit somewhere that parts of the questline might actually have been, or part of the storyline might actually have been resolved in the expansion. But I've yet to encounter the evidence of that. Okay, let's not stand in flames here. Flames are painful. And there you are. Gone. Ooh, hello there, children. Oh, yeah. Enemy doing all kinds of nasty things to just slow me down. Definitely not appreciate it. Good thing is, the boss is dead, so he's not doing that anymore. Oh, kind of overlooked that the crystal here is shooting at me as well as you, so let's let's stop that rude behavior. Hello there, floating eye. Goodbye, floating eye. Here's the trip south, part two. We did for the XP.
And we keep following the road. Let's shout at you. How much damage do that, does that do? It's only 20%. The uh, Horn of Gander. Oh, these are big, tough enemies. I would have been surprised if the Horn of Gander wiped them. On the other hand, Robles, they took more damage because they are weaker. So as I said uh, in, in one of the episodes closer to the beginning of the series, uh, boosting the Horn of Gandar, it scales with uh, your main hand damage. So if you use yourself uh, a two-handed weapon, then that is of course going to do a lot more damage because then it's actually going to use the full weapon rather than only one out of the two weapons I currently have. Um, on the other hand, though, there's a pretty big physical damage component. So if you're having a build that is mostly scaling the physical damage rather than the elemental damage as I am, then naturally the uh, damage that you do with the Horn of Gandar is uh, going to increase as well. Okay, there's the waypoint there. So that means that we actually have to be slightly below here for the third camp. Ooh, Sylvie! Sylvie's there. So the quest line has been resolved. This is for Sylvie and Moana. Oh, that 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 makes me happy. If you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, those are characters from the trip south. Uh, Sylvie is the daughter and now we know Nuana is probably the name of uh, the mother that is writing these pretty harrowing journals. But it has been resolved. That's that's all, all I wanted. I'm very happy that it actually was the case. No, nothing fancy, just two extra monsters in between a large group of monsters that already were there. But it, it's closure. Closure is good. Okay, shouting the horn. Oh, another way, of course, to uh, scale the uh, Horn of Gandar is by increasing the effective skill level that it has. I haven't actually looked into whether there are items or sets that specifically boost the Horn of Gander, but I would not be surprised if that were to be the case. And I can imagine the Horn of Gandar and the uh, Soldier's Warcry having a pretty nice overlap. Because now they're both AOE based. They... I think the Warcry also has a damage component, but it's mostly just a a taunt combined with a enemy debuff. The the horn reduces the enemy's elemental damage. I think the, the war crime might actually reduce their physical damage. But together that, that covers quite a sp uh, part of the, the damage spectrum that a lot of enemies fall on. But if there's maybe some some uh, green monster and frequent items that modify the skill, maybe adding some more damage or doing other interesting things to it, maybe converting the damage type. That of course could open up a lot of new possibilities to improve the skill and its usefulness. It's just the, the monster infrequent. Now the, the, the green items that modify, uh, that can now and often do uh, modify skills in a more interesting way than just adding skill uh, levels. I think it is one of the best additions to the game in the expansion and that's snow. Considering just how much I've enjoyed the Necromancer and oh, how much fun I'm actually having with the Inquisitor now as well. Um, and of course all the, the new story content. 
fact that, that such a thing like that is just one of my most favorite things is probably says enough. It's just so good for build diversity. It has so much potential to be you know, developed even further if the devs choose to do that. Actually, secretly find myself casting quite some some spells here as well, in addition to just my standard attacks cast. Now, if you're in a, in a boss fight and you're doing the, 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 the whole thing, then of course, now you're putting down your defensive circle, trap one, trap two, storm box, like that. And then you want to shout out a, a horn of Gander every once in a while as well. And then you're shooting for like three or four seconds and then you can repeat it all over again. Uh, let's see. There ought to be a shrine nearby. There's the the one that is uh, sealed by Catonic energies. That is, of course, because it is the avatar of Mocha Dragon Shrine. We don't have enough reputation to even do something with it. So I might as well ignore it. There's the uh, ruins of Korvac. Is it on the map? It's not even on the map, but it's the ruins of Korvac. There is a quest chain that sends you there. Could be that it is actually the our uh, our new buddies of Kamen's Chosen. Could be that it is a higher tier necromancer quest. I tend to blur details like that together. Hello there, Ragrathar Rageblood. You are very angry. But you also have some angry friends, which does make this easier. Of course, doing some uh, some shouting definitely helps with the whole angry friends problem. No, for, for like this, he's, he's pretty fast, highly mobile, not quite sure if running here would do much for me, whereas now standing and shooting. Probably the best is going to be if we just explore a little bit of options. He's, he's fast. And... Well, I guess he's, he's, he's going to stand and then fight at some point. So you do have some, some options, but... No boss fights. In the end, you're going to have to face tank some enemies anyway. So that's why most of the builds, it actually most does pay off too have a certain degree of tankiness to the build. Hey, yo, healer. Maybe we should uh, take you out first. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's a good one. Wonderful. Hey. And let's look for the shrine here. Then there's going to be a next waypoint and then that's gonna be a good point to call it the end of an episode so no, a bit more introspective than normal here but uh, every once in a while I do have that and I don't know it's uh no, just these episodes though, from my personal p perspective now I'm just recording them in, in a, a sequence I tend to have just one series going or maybe two uh, But no, just using the, the episodes to talk about what's gonna come up. It's especially if for the folks who watch the, the video relatively soon to how close it's gonna come out. It, it's almost like live blogging and doing the Let's Plays together. Without you needing to uh, nope, spend the ever extra effort to actually watch a, a blog. In addition to the gameplay videos. Okay, or was the, ah, the shrine was just after this one. I confused those two. Hey. Wonderful. Now, get me some devotion boots. Just 
Cast uh, Waltz in. Do some shouting. Do some, uh, some stunning. Do some shooting. And then cleanse the shrine. We need a crack lodestone. Sure. Those are common enough. And that point is going to get us another point on the quill. And it is ether resistance, which is good to have, actually. Uh, funny enough, vitality is now our lowest resist with only 43% in it. Um, but, well, we've, we've got a, a little bit more of an aggressive slant going with this character. So, of course, as a result, it's a bit more difficult to balance the resistances. But, as I said, we've uh, managed to make it here. So, next episode, we can, we can dive into the uh, Tomb of the Archon and then make our way towards Fort Icon. And depending on, on the, the timing, might face the Lucius or that's going to be the episode after that. But for now, I'm going to thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.